Hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Dawson, and today I'm gonna show you how to take a standard mirror and turn it into a custom full-length standing mirror. I actually did this project a few years ago with my old friends, Kosh and S. They moved into their new house, and we did a couple projects together, like remodeling their kitchen, and we made a few changes to their primary bathroom. But the main change that we made in that bathroom was actually swapping out their old big mirror for two smaller ones. Instead of throwing away the mirror, I convinced them to store it in their garage until we could make something really cool with it. After doing some research and inspiration shopping around, we landed on a chunky two-tone wood frame look, and I never had made one of these mirrors before, but I figured how hard could it be? Thankfully, they only lived about a street away from me at the time, so we brought their mirror over to my house where I had a little bit more room to work in the garage, and it was a somewhat sketchy process getting it over there, but thankfully no accidents to report, and we were able to get started. The first step in this process was to build a backing for the mirror that it could attach to and just make the whole piece a lot stronger. The initial plan we had was to cut a piece of plywood three inches bigger than the mirror all the way around and then we were going to attach the pieces of trim onto that exposed piece of plywood all the way around the mirror. Well I quickly realized that this might have left some gaps all around where either the trim or the mirror wasn't completely straight there might be little gaps in between the two so we switched gears and we cut the plywood down to be the exact size of the mirror and then we came up with a new plan for attaching the trim which I'll show you a little later on. I would recommend using a three quarter inch sheet of plywood for maximum strength if you're going to do this project. After that was all cut, we used mirror glue to attach the mirror to that sheet of plywood. And I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer, make sure you use the right type of glue here because I have heard that some type of glue will damage the back of the mirror if it's not made specifically for mirrors. So just make sure you check that out. Looking back at these clips, I would probably not recommend carrying the mirror like this. It was flexing a lot and if it broke, that would have been really bad and shattered all over us and the floor. So safety first friends. We put the glue onto the piece of plywood plywood and then transferred that mirror over and it was really heavy so we didn't feel like we needed to weigh it down any extra while that glue was drying and we just kind of let it set up on its own. Okay now for the fun part adding their special trim all around that mirror. We did choose a two-tone design for the mirror with the trim on the inside part being a natural wood and then the outside part we wanted to paint it black. So to save money we only bought nice oak wood for that inside part and then we just used some pine for the sections that would be painted black. Pine is so much cheaper than oak, and since it's gonna be painted, we didn't feel like we needed to buy a super fancy wood for that part. We used one by three oak boards for this, and we also used one by three pine boards for that outer piece of trim. So to attach the oak pieces of wood to the mirror, we used that same mirror glue as before, but we did end up weighing these pieces of trim down while they dried. One major tip here, make sure not to put the glue too close to the edge of the trim though, because you will be able to see a little bit of the backside of that trim in the mirror itself. And if there's any glue there, you'll see see it and it won't really look very good. After the trim dried, we needed to patch a few little holes in the corners of our trim. It just wasn't a very good cut, and so there was some gaps we needed to fill. And the best trick I have to do this is you actually mix a little bit of the wood sawdust from when you cut the pieces of trim with a little bit of wood glue, and it makes a perfect wood putty that will match the tone of the wood completely. So we put a little bit of this homemade wood putty in all of the gaps and cracks, let it dry, sand it off, and then it looked perfect afterwards. Next up, we cut all of the pieces of pine for our outer trim. And like I mentioned before, these are also one by three size boards. And it was a lot easier to go ahead and pre-paint these versus painting them when they were all attached to the mirror. So we just used a little can of spray paint to do this and it was super, super fast. After that paint dried, it was time to brainstorm how to attach these black pieces of trim to the mirror. And it's a little bit more tricky than the other pieces of trim because these ones are not laying flat against the mirror. So we came up with a combo of wood glue and nails to attach it. Since the mirror is not touching any part of these pieces of trim, we use a different, just general construction adhesive to attach them. And I would definitely get recommend getting a friend to help hold up the boards during this step. Or if you don't have a friend, you could also use some clamps to hold everything together. Now, obviously these pieces of trim would just fall off if we let go. So we did decide to add in a few brad nails just to hold it together while all that construction adhesive was drying. And my biggest tip with you is to 
go slow with this step because if you angle your nail gun wrong any which way and it nails into that mirror, it could crack something and totally mess it up. You wanna make sure you have your nail gun aimed perfectly so that the nail will go through the black piece of trim and into the oak piece of trim. It's not that complicated, but I just wanna give this disclaimer before you jump in and try this part of the project yourself. So our initial design for the project was to actually go ahead and hang this mirror onto the wall. And in order to do this, we needed to build something called a French cleat. Oh my gosh, a big spider. Ah! To do this, we just cut it one piece of wood at a 45 degree angle on the table saw. And what's really cool about the French cleat system is that it's a really strong way to hold something heavy onto your wall. And the way it works is that you attach one of those pieces of wood to your item that you're hanging on the wall. So in our case, that was the mirror and we attached it to the back of the mirror with construction adhesive and glues. And then you'll attach the other piece of wood to the wall and anchor it into the studs. And basically the mirror ledge will just hang perfectly on that little ledge that you've attached to the wall. And they kind of lock into each other and make a really strong hanging system. Now we should have been done with this build at this point, but unfortunately I used the wrong black paint initially. Um, it had a really wild texture to it and you really couldn't tell from far away when you were looking at the mirror, but up close it looked like this was going to become a dust magnet. So I lightly sanded off all of that black trim down and then just went ahead and repainted it with a non-textured black spray paint. I would recommend using a satin finish at least if you're gonna do this project because it'll just be a lot easier to wipe down in the future versus something like a flat paint. For the oak pieces of trim, we really wanted to make sure that whatever finish we put on it didn't change the color of it too much. So we landed on using a matte finish clear coat. This was my first time using this product, but I was really impressed with the results and it did not change the color of the wood practically at all. So I'm really happy with this and I'll definitely use it again in the future. Like I mentioned before, thankfully my friends only lived one street away in my neighborhood and we were able to just drive it back over to their house when it was done. And this was 10 times more stressful than the initial drive over to my house. Now, once we got the mirror into their room, we actually decided it looked way better just leaning up against the wall. So we left it that way and my friends later on added an anti-tip strap to the back of the mirror so it wouldn't fall down and crush anybody. I just really love the way that this mirror turned out and I think it was a really fun and creative way to repurpose and customize a mirror. And if you like DIY projects, furniture flips, and room transformations, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for all of the tips, tricks, and inspo. I cannot wait to see you for my next project and thanks so much for watching. Ow. 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 <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Come